thank you all very much. I appreciate being introduced by such a fine journalist and a true gentleman. Bob, I want to thank you for putting together a, a really enjoyable evening. Laura and I join you in congratulating the journalist who you honor tonight. And we're looking forward to tonight's program. Pretty good program manager in selecting Ray Charles to entertain us. Since we gathered for this, uh, last gathered for this dinner, we have lived through some extraordinary events. We've seen a dictator defy the world, and we have seen a coalition of free nations give its answer. We have witnessed the swift advance of soldiers and Marines through hostile territory, the fall of a tyrant, and of the monuments he raised to himself, and the beginnings of a free nation in the very place where civilization began. We have seen the images of war more closely and vividly than ever before because of journalists who often shared in the dangers of war. Many reporters, photographers, and camera crews took that hard journey to Baghdad. I think it is fair to say that the journalists grew to respect the skill and bravery and decency of the men and women who wear our nation's uniform. And I am certain that our military gained greater respect for the journalists traveling with them, who showed a tenacity and courage of their own. Because of journalists who accepted risk and hardship, the first draft of history has been vivid and has been moving. Every commitment worth making Every vocation worth pursuing brings with it the possibility of sacrifice. Our military knows this well. It is also true of your profession. In this conflict, at least 13 journalists from across the world lost their lives, including two men Bob spoke of a few minutes ago. Michael Kelly was one of the most accomplished columnists and editors in America. covered the Persian Gulf War in 1991 and left that conflict hoping that the long-suffering people of Iraq would one day live in freedom. I saw Michael in the Oval Office shortly before he returned to the Middle East, and he was eager to be present at Iraq's liberation. The troops of the 3rd Infantry Division, where Mike was embedded, his physical courage. He was called a soldier's journalist. And Michael Kelly's readers knew of his intellectual courage. He wrote with integrity and moral conviction, never attempting to gain favor or to please the powerful. He deployed his wit against pretension. He deployed his wit against pretension of any kind and showed reverence when reverence was due. All who knew him remember Michael's intensity and his decency. Friends came to know his loyalty. He was a mentor to young writers, a devoted husband to Max, and a wonderful father to his boys, Tom and Jack. The man Michael admired above all others said, of it, said this of him, 
He was our very best, smart and brave and noble and loving. That fine tribute comes from his dad, who is with us tonight, Tom Kelly. Also moving with the 3rd Infantry Division was David Bloom. He was the perfect man to carry viewers along on the charge to Baghdad. He was tireless, completely focused, and clearly doing the work he loved. David had a natural sincerity that people liked. We saw his live reports from the Bloom machine. And we saw some of the finest war coverage ever broadcast. One of, <laughs> our last images of David Bloom capture a journalist in his prime, making full use of his gifts. His own last email home tells us something else about this man who was about to turn 40. He wrote to his wife, Melanie, here I am, supposedly at the peak of professional success, and I could frankly care less. Yes, I'm proud of the good job we have all been doing, but in the scheme of things, it matters little compared to my relationship with you, the girls, and Jesus. It says something about a man's entire life when those are his final thoughts. For those words and for so much else in David's life, we are grateful. Both men brought great credit to a hard and worthy profession. Their work is done and well done. We will remember them with admiration and we will remember them with affection. May God bless their souls.